Hello to all YouTubers out there. Welcome to another video by New York Stilo. Today, today we're going to talk about reverse osmosis systems. Now, uh, considering the fact that I'm rebuilding the 90 gallon system, many more videos to come on the entire process of rebuilding this system. I've got a lot of videos to show you guys how I installed the equipment inside the stand. Uh, we're going to do a video on uh, chillers, what to look for. We're going to do another one on uh, glass versus acrylics. Uh, many more videos to come, but today we're going to talk about reverse osmosis systems. And in the spirit of rebuilding the system, it is important for me to tell you this. Let me tell you this right off the back here. There is no way for the life of me that I would ever, ever add re uh, tap water to my marine aquariums. Tap water and marine aquariums are like oil and water. They just do not go together. It is important for you to know and understand that. And uh, considering that I released a video on a new and old tank syndrome, it is very important that since day one, you begin to add uh, reverse osmosis water to your system. And if you cannot uh, initially get a unit with, uh, you know, a reverse osmosis unit, you, you can definitely, there's other options here and you can actually use distilled water but uh, for the life of me, I would never add, not even in an emergency, I'd rather run to the uh, uh, supermarket and buy myself as many gallons as I need of distilled water to do a water change, or, but I would never add tap water. Now, tap water itself has uh, so many different elements that just uh, are not found in nature you know iron all of these things in heavy and high concentrations uh, are are not found in nature odors chlorine and the such uh, phosphate levels are ridiculously high especially here in new york and uh if your pipes are made out of copper you know it's important to know that you definitely want to get yourself an rodi system now there's a couple of things that you need to look for when it comes to having a reverse osmosis system now, this particular unit you're looking at here is made by SpectraPure, and it's a 90 gallons per day unit, and it's about 280 bucks, I believe I paid for it a couple of years ago. But, you know, there are so many different designs and so many different uh, manufacturers that make uh, RODI systems, and in the end, they're all going to work the same for you. So, whichever one you get is, is the outside, uh, the mechanism of it is basically going to do the same thing as this one is going to do. Now what really comes into play and makes this particular unit better than another one is of course that this one comes with several features uh, such as two TDS meters which monitor the total dissolved organics and will be an indication uh, you know as to whether or not you need to replace the membrane but it also comes with a membrane that is very expensive. The membrane itself is a really high efficient uh, membrane with 96 to 98 percent rejection rate and uh, getting you know this membrane alone is like a hundred and something bucks. Uh, it's made by FilmTech and uh, you know you really need to question when you're looking at a RODI system that is not as expensive you know it, it, it could be five stages and you know the RODI system is basically a hundred bucks you got to question yourself what kind of a membrane is in there and so you know you get what you pay for but in this particular uh, unit here uh, the fact that it contains that film tech 90 gallon per day membrane which has such a high rejection rate will actually prolong the process in which you need to replace the membrane and the stages that follow it um, you know itself you know it, it um, one thing I will tell you quickly is that I did replace this membrane at one point with a standard film tech membrane and it only lasted a year before I started to see some phosphates uh, coming out of it and so I, I replaced it again and made sure that in the standard one was like 79 bucks but then I you know when I replaced it again I made sure that I got myself the high efficient one. If you go to SpectraPure and you look at the prices of the different membranes, you'll see what I'm talking about. And so, so it's important to know and look at that for a particular, if the price is really cheap, the overall unit can work for you in, in any which way that you uh, need it to. 
but it, it, you know the, the more you spend the longer it'll take it, two years plus before you replace that membrane and it'll actually protect the life of the di stages now quickly let me just i, I know that i made two videos before but it's rather easy uh, to explain how this particular unit works the first stage of course is the sediment filter it's actually rather dirty we're going to zoom in here uh, quickly and you can see that uh, it's uh, a little dirty the first stage is the sediment stage this is very inexpensive to replace um, the water enters this stage um, and goes into the second stage which is the carbon stage now when it comes to replacing the stages here I, I can tell you that I only replace the first two stages of this membrane every three to four months uh, when it comes to the RO membrane and the two DI stages I wait two plus years before I replace it and the first two stages are rather inexpensive uh, you can get yourself a $10 uh, sediment filter and a $10 carbon filter every three or four months uh, replace that and by replacing these two stages frequently it'll actually prolong the life of the membrane itself you know uh, the longer you leave it the more dirt is actually going to make it through into the membrane you know and cause the membrane to to not work as it should uh faster than than it can actually last and so but it's very simple uh, travels the first two stages and from the carbon filter which the carbon is going to remove only and this is important let me let me touch up on this quickly because a lot of people ask me questions they say well um do i really need to have a, a reverse osmosis filter why can't i just use a drinking water filter you can't do that guys because a drinking water filter is only going to have um carbon and carbon only really removes chlorines and heavy metals and such but phosphates, silicates, and all of that, especially if you have copper piping, is going to escape into uh, your aquarium. And this is the very things that you want to make sure that you remove from your system. And so it travels from the first two stages into the reverse osmosis stage, which has two inputs and out, I mean two outputs. It has one input here. The black tubing actually enters the membrane and behind the membrane here, I'm going to look over here on the top is two outputs here one with the yellow line one with the clear white line now this particular unit um, actually brings a blue uh, tubing but I've since replaced that you know because the tubing can't get dirty but um, you, it's important to understand that you know reverse osmosis systems work in a way that it is going to discard a certain amount of bad water before you actually can collect um, some pure water uh, this particular unit has a four to one ratio which means it discards uh, four gallons of dirty water before it makes one gallon of pure water uh, so you know it's important to understand that 90 gallons per day is 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 what it it basically um, you know advertises but when it comes to this 90 gallon per day thing, let me touch up on this as well. There's a couple of aspects that come into play before you can actually really collect 90 gallons per day. Uh, 90 gallon per day meaning 24 hours, you'll be able to collect 90 gallons of pure water. But that's not the case because what happens is that in order for you to collect 90 gallons per day, the water coming from your tap water into the membrane and everything else must be 77 degrees. And we all know that, you know, here in New York, even in the summertime, uh, my water is like 50 degrees. So the, 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 the colder the water, the slower your membrane is going to work in producing pure water. And so another aspect that comes into play is the amount of pressure per square inch. Now, PSI is measured here through the use of this little um, gauge meter that you see here. And so with using this gauge meter here, um, it will allow you to, you know, discover how much PSI you're actually flowing through the entire unit. And so the PSI must be 40 to 60 P, uh, PSI in order for it to work properly and for you to collect 90 gallons per day. And because my water is neither 77 degrees and my PSI is around 40, I went ahead and I purchased myself a booster pump. 
Now, in those older videos that I have, I talk a little bit about the booster pump. You may want to uh, take a look at that, but I'm just briefly covering what to look for. And so from the, the, the uh, RO membrane, finally, uh, the water reaches the last stage. Now, I mentioned before that the RO membrane only really rejects uh, 96 to 98% of, of total dissolved organics. And so th what, here comes into play the DI stages. The DI stages are going to remove that uh, 2% of whatever is left over and you're gonna get the purest water that you can possibly get in your marine, into your marine aquarium. And this is how it is in nature, guys. You know, uh, you know, and it's important for me to tell you guys, do not drink water that comes out of the DI stages. Do not do that. This can actually make you sick if you, if you do it for a prolonged period of time. Uh, you can certainly take this unit and turn it into a drinking water unit, but only drink the water that comes out of the reverse osmosis membrane only, not the DI stages. The DI stages are chemically bound with a chemical that adheres everything that passes through it, and the water comes out so pure that it can actually, you know, you're starving yourself from the nutrients found in fresh water, which we, we require so much uh, to live on. And so, um, very important for the life of me, I would never use uh, fresh water in my marine aquarium. I hope that you guys have found this uh, video uh, quite informational. If you have any questions, uh, comments, concerns, post them down below. Many more videos to come. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video altogether. Be sure to come on back, guys. New York Stilo is signing out. Peace.